afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Redberry Wheel here, and welcome back to another video where I talk about encampment and serving on it as cadet staff. So I will be creating a video focused more on senior members and how it's associated with specialty tracks and like serving in a duty position at an encampment or a, a region or a national special activity. We'll, we'll talk about that in a separate video. I already covered being a student. At least I summarized the experience for a student, provided some suggestions for future cadre, and I'll be talking about that a little bit more in this video as well. So if you are looking for more information about what encampment is, then feel free to check that out up here. And if you want to see the first part of this video series, that will also be linked up in the iCard. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit more of the tips and tricks and some of the experience stuff that I had learned from being on the executive cadre for an encampment. So I had served as, as a cadet commander, a cadet deputy commander, a squadron commander, and a squadron first sergeant when I was a cadet. And in those positions, I, I learned a lot or a little depending on what position I was serving in and depending on how closely we followed 60-70. So I'll, I'll just say, I'll talk a little bit about my experience when we weren't following it. That was the year 2012, and I was a cadet first sergeant that year. I was 13, so I <laughs> I thought that I could just walk around and like own the place. I created a fabulous PT plan. I had my clipboard with the PT schedule, and that was basically the only thing that I was really in charge of throughout the week. Like I stood in formation, and I would lead PT, and I would just be yelling at the cadets, and then when it came to like inspecting the barracks and stuff, I would just walk around and like look around and see how people are doing, try to scare them, and then walk away. That is not effective at all. Like I didn't really learn much from that experience. Like if I think back to it, I remember some of my experiences where like I would be sitting outside of like one of the weapon sims buildings and sitting with my squadron commander just chatting about cap stuff. I didn't really talk much to her because she was previously my flight commander the year earlier, but she was very nice and I thought it was just so strange that my previous squadron commander was my, or my previous flight commander was now my squadron commander and I was like, this is really weird. And she didn't really provide me with much mentorship and neither did the first sergeant of encampment which I feel like was a huge missed opportunity because the encampment is supposed to serve as just like this huge leadership laboratory where cadets can learn from their leadership mistakes in addition to taking that personal initiative and feeling empowered by leading others and kind of setting that example, setting expectations and watching their followers grow. Like that's a really awesome experience by just like giving people your expectations, saying here's my expectations, and then watching them achieve those and going past those and like really taking off in success. So anyway, uh, when I was a first sergeant, I really didn't get much out of that experience. When I was there, I was like, I'm a first sergeant and I feel powerful and this is amazing. And that, as cool as that is, I feel like it could have gotten a lot more if I had been mentored effectively by my squadron commander by the first sergeant of encampment, which we, we call command chief now, but it was called first sergeant of encampment when I went at that year. And by being given feedback actively, like saying, so how do you feel the day went? What are some things that went well? What are some things that could have used improvement? What steps can we take to support you to improve those things moving forward? What steps can you take to work on those things and strengthen weaknesses that you may potentially have in your leadership or in your areas of knowledge, stuff like that. I didn't get that advice. I didn't get that feedback. And being a first sergeant and camin at 13 was probably not the best thing because I wasn't really mentally mature enough for that position to really like be in charge of a squadron. Um, I probably would have been a better fit with a flight sergeant position and then direct mentorship from a flight commander. But since they didn't really know me that well, I think they just didn't know where I would best fit. And the selection process that year was just interviews. So they just put people where they wanted to put people. And if they knew the person, they'd be like, oh, this person definitely wants to go here. That other person definitely wants to go here. And it was a very biased pro process in general. So 
that was that was kind of just my experience when I was a first sergeant and then um unfortunately when I had applied the next year I didn't get selected I sat through the entire selection process day where they would give you five minutes to just like bleed your case and when I didn't get accepted I felt devastated I was like wow I'm a complete failure I don't know how to be a leader and there's clearly something that I need to change here and at that same time like when I said I didn't get accepted someone who had been mentoring me at the time said yeah I think you're promoting too quickly because I was a cadet second lieutenant right after turning 14 ish and I, I was not at that maturity level to understand the responsibilities associated with being a cadet officer I didn't I didn't understand certain concepts like delegating or inspiring people to take personal initiative, how to properly give feedback, any of those things. I didn't have those skills yet. And part of it was because I didn't have a lot of experience with that and I just hadn't gotten into those sort of things yet, in addition to being just not mentally mature enough. So one of my points is if you are mentally matured, and you have the experience to back up whatever grade you are in, then you're doing a good job with the progression in the cadet program. Like I, I've seen some younger cadets promote fairly quickly through the program that don't have that experience, kind of like where I was going. And no one's, no one's there to say, hey, maybe you should slow down. Maybe you should consider taking on these experiences. These are some areas that we really need to focus on before you move forward and press forward through the cadet program. Because if you just blast through everything, you get your spots like as early as you can. I think that the youngest you can be is like 15-ish, 15 years old to get your spots. Or it's either 15 or 16. But like if, if you're that young and you don't have that experience that's associated with being a cadet colonel, then you have not gotten everything you can out of the program. Like I personally wish I could have served as a flight commander at some point. And after I had served as cadet commander, I had applied to be a flight commander, but I understand that a cadet colonel serving in a flight commander position isn't really the point. The, the flight commander role is to understand that operational level leadership, that you're sort of the boots on the ground, you're almost on the tactical level, but you're delegating actively to your flight sergeant and you're mentoring them while also mentoring the people in your flight while executing the mission that has been set out with the planning for encampment with, with your daily schedule. So um, I, I hadn't been accepted in 2013 and I had applied to be a flight commander. So I guess the, the key takeaway here is know where you are in terms of your maturity and your knowledge what kind of skills have you mastered and what are the areas that you need more experience in or what are things that you don't quite understand that you might need more practice in and then when you are applying yourself in encampment staff positions then look at how you are succeeding in those things and where you can add additional improvements or you could seek out feedback and advice from mentors or your peers so that that's just what i wanted to say i did eventually go back in 2015 i had applied and i was like I, no one knows me now because i haven't been here for two years and most people that one of their bragging points is like i came back between 2011 and 2020 and i've been here every single year i wish like when i first went to encampment i was like that's gonna be me I'm going to do it every single year and I'm going to be selected for cadet staff every single year. Ah, my hubris. <laughs> uh, no, it, it was, it was a good experience because that was the first year that they had tried the new style of doing a cadet selection exercise where they looked at the different traits and they had different activities that evaluated each of those traits. They hadn't super solidified it yet because it was the first year it was being done. But it was a really fantastic process that was put together to kind of develop an unbiased selection process for all cadre members. And if you want more information on that cadre selection process, I, I do have the I card up here where I explain that whole process in that, that first video of encampment discussion for cadre. So by establishing that process in 2015, I 
I somehow managed to impress them because I tried to facilitate discussions. Oh my gosh, I remember I was I was so nervous because when I got there, I was like, I don't know anyone here. And there were very few people from my squadron who were actually applying for cadet staff. It was like one or two. And the two people that were there that were from my squadron didn't really like me or they didn't really want to talk to me and they wanted to gravitate towards the people they hadn't seen in months. So I get it. You don't have to be best friends with everyone. So when I went through the activity, what I, I tried to do, I, just, I remember, I remember the different rooms. I remember who was in my groups and it was very interesting because that day was a very big learning experience for me. It, it kind of showed in my eyes like what I had actually learned prior to getting there and how to have a discussion. And I didn't really have that self-reflection before because there was one activity where it was like we had to come to a consensus. consensus. It was like the team consensus problem solving thing where we would read through a scenario and then we were given a list of questions and then we would have to go through each of the questions and then the team would have to decide which answer we wanted to be our answer. And so I was like, hey, this person is quiet, so maybe I should bring them into the conversation. Or this person seems to be talking a lot, so I'll say, hey, that's a great idea. And then try to pull it into what does everyone think of this? Do we agree on it? Do, who doesn't agree? And then try to facilitate that even more. And I, I just didn't realize that that was something that I was capable of doing because I wasn't really challenged in that kind of way where I had to actually analyze after we completed the activity because we were given feedback questions after completing it and the senior member was like was anyone leading the conversation there and they were like um she is she she's leading the discussion and I was like wait I was that's a good point and so I I was I was kind of baffled because they were they were all saying that I was helping facilitate the discussion when I personally was just like I'm just trying to do my best here to make sure that I, I am serving the needs of the encampment in wherever they need me. And that, was, that shows a shift in mentality. Because when I was applying in 2013, my mentality was, I deserve to be here because I've been here before and I think I will do a great job. Now, I still think I can do a great job at things, but I tried to take a more humble approach in being that I will support the activity in whatever way I can. And if you, if, if the command staff and the executive cadre that year saw me as filling a specific need in their team, then I would be more than happy to serve in it. So that, that kind of shift between like, I deserve this versus I am flexible and I'm willing to support the team as needed is, is an important concept to grasp as you mature as a leader I think and another point of feedback oh my gosh there there was the uh, impromptu briefing section which tested the communication skills and so my topic that I picked was how to plant a tree and the senior member who was evaluating my group was the encampment commander and I was like I don't know this guy he said that he has a lot of prior military experience. This is kind of intimidating because he is actually grading us. I don't know what to do. And the previous encampment commanders were basically like top tier, like amazing people who I had never seen. And they were just kind of like almost like Bigfoot where you rarely see them. And when you see them, it's very important and you should be slightly scared because if the encampment commander is there, then it's a big deal. And they were more laissez-faire style, like in the earlier years, which is fine. Laissez-faire is an okay style to take, but with the encampment commander being there, that was like a huge deal for me. And afterwards he said, if anyone wants feedback on how they performed, you just let me know and I'll, I'll give you some suggestions. And I, I asked him after we had completed it, he pulled me aside and he said, yeah, you did everything perfectly, except there's one thing that I would recommend you include, which is giving a personal anecdote. And I was like, what? And he was saying that including a personal anecdote can make you more relatable, more personable 
and people can imagine you telling that story about yourself, which in that instance will make them feel more connected with you as a speaker. And I hadn't really realized that because most times when I would explain things, I would just say, this is how you do it. There's not a whole lot there and it's good information, but by adding that personal touch to it, it makes it it's just so much memorable and it adds a lot of impact. So like when he had his clipboard and he was like, yeah, that was the only thing that you missed. I was like, whoa, that, that gave me a huge boost in confidence because after being declined from contrary, I was like, I don't have a lot of confidence right now and I'm just, I'm trying here. So that, that kind of reassured me that I was on the right track. So I, re- I sincerely appreciated that, that senior member saying, or the encampment commander that year, saying those things to me. And I'm not sure if he actually remembers talking to me about it, but that also shows the impact of leadership, that small actions that a leader can take to give that individual consideration can have a really long-term impact on people that they may never realize. So that's my small tangent on uh, my experience with the 2015 selection exercise but i i think my favorite year was being a squadron commander and here is why i consistently got all the sleep that i wanted every night at encampment or at least most of them if not all of them i think there was one night that i didn't because of some stuff that was going on but uh man i'm getting flooded with with encampment memories from 2015 now Um, One thing that I did as a squadron commander was that at the end of every day, I would have one-on-one discussions with my my cadre members. So I would have a discussion with my first sergeant, I would have a discussion with my flight commanders, and I would try to get my flight sergeants too. And if I didn't get them, that was okay. Um, During foot checks or the, the feet checks with the senior member, they would first go to my training officer for the squadron. And after they would talk to the training officer about the hot spots on their feet, and they would, they would mark the everything down on their charts, the cadets would come to me and I would ask them, how was your day? What, what was the highlight of your day? And was there something that challenged you today? And if there was anything that we could do to further support them. And it meant a lot to me to get to hear about the highlights of their days because it, re- it would remind me of my prior encampment experience. In addition to just getting to hear the excitement that they felt about like, yeah, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. And yeah, I I just found that to be a very rewarding part of that encampment because just getting to chat with people and getting to see them achieve and excel, man, I'm, I'm, I'm reliving all these memories and just remembering standing outside of the barracks. There were giant fans. The fans were like this big. We didn't have AC that year because they moved us into a different set of barracks than we were originally supposed to get. Wait, no, that was that was the following year. Um, but we, we had barracks that had giant fans and they had concrete floors and everything. And they were better than the World War II barracks that we stayed in the previous times that I was there. But they still weren't great. So... It was okay, but the dining facility was good. Just the rest of it was, eh. (laughs) And let's see. So I I also enjoyed my squadron commander year because I got to reconnect with encampment and just kind of solidify that it was something that I enjoyed in addition to watching my students succeed. So when we would have our initial discussions during required staff training, which is training that you are supposed to go through at least twice. I think it's twice, and, or it, you're supposed to get a certain number of hours of required staff training, and we would break it off into two training sessions, and it would be split over two different weekends where you'd get to interact with people and plan in addition to doing the required staff training. Anyway, so with the required staff training, I really remembered that we talked about intensity a lot, and the new, well, he was the new encampment commander at the time. He was he was trying to emulate the 60-70 as closely as possible, and he emphasized fun. And he also emphasized that we should take alternative tactics to training. And so when I talked to my, my cadet staff for the squadron, I told them basically that we wanted to set expectations and that we wanted to ensure that 
they moved with a sense of urgency when we needed them to move in a sense of urgency and that we would make them understand what we needed to get done in the first day and though since it was the first year of us trying to follow it more closely there was a bit of yelling as soon as they finished signing their honor agreements but after those first 10 minutes my squadron really never yelled at them again there was one point at encampment where the one flight in my squadron had honor flight twice they they were a really excellent group of cadets they were super focused they were super high speed and they were just very impressive in general and the other flight they were also impressive but the other flight just like barely <laughs> barely beat them out and i had a discussion with with the other flight and i was like hey guys so we're one squadron one team and since you guys have gotten on our flight twice is there anything that we could do to help further unify the squadron because the other flight may not feel accomplished as much because of you guys getting honor flight twice and so the cadets took it upon themselves that they would present honor flight like the ribbon to the other flight so that we would be an honor squadron together which was very very inspiring and i also i gave them cadence challenges so if you're familiar with hooked on a feeling that was that was the year that the first guardians of the galaxy came out so that whew, that's a while ago um so that's why we had hooked on the feeling hooked on a feeling and then there was the hunger Games song like are you are you coming to the tree but we changed it to the squadron and it was really spooky when we would do it and it was also very quiet so people were like Ooh, scary and i enjoyed that very much i know i've turned this into a little bit of a story session but that i think that's why that was one of my favorite years if not my favorite one Though I think the most rewarding year was when I was Cadet Commander, just, just by the sheer fact of how much time and effort that was put into planning and then seeing it being executed almost to exactly the way that I had envisioned it was, was very nice because our team had a set of goals and we came together and we were like, this is what we want to do. And then with the end product, it was a very positive experience for students and it was a very positive experience for the cadets. And then the senior members, we also had done additional training to just kind of explain like, here's how we want to interact with the cadets and train them and allow them to fail, but also be supportive and to be kind of like the locos parentis or whatever the Latin phrase is. In loco parentis, I think it's called. Um, anyway, so that, that was just a few of my thoughts from the 2015 encampment, but flashing forward i got to serve as the cadet deputy commander and the cadet commander back to back years and i think that was a very helpful experience because i saw what i liked and what i wanted to improve when i was the deputy commander and then when i was the cadet commander i could actually implement those changes so one of the concerns for the year that i was a deputy was that we said that they should not really be yelling and they took that as no intensity on the first day. So it was almost like the intensity was backwards for the entire encampment, which had frustrated some of the cadet staff and the senior members because they were like, well, it's supposed to be the other way around. It was just a miscommunication, I think, because there are different intensity tools that you can use. Like, you can be direct. You can say, these are my expectations. Do you understand? I'm not yelling. But me saying that, my tone, my inflection, the way that I am carrying myself, all of those things contribute to the overall intensity equation for an encampment. So I think we just didn't clearly explain that enough. And I think it was still a success because it was just, it had a lot of good experiences and there were a few miscommunications here and there, but overall the cadets had a positive experience attending. So that's, that's why I think like the first year that I was, that I came back, the intensity was a little bit too high on the first day and it was a little overwhelming because it was hot, people were dehydrated, stuff happened and it was just a lot for the first day. And then with the, the following year, it was just like complete opposite where it was like very low intensity and people were like, oh yes, here are the barracks. Moving on. Here is the chow hall. Moving on. And then with the following year, I 
I swear, we did our best to try to balance the two. I'm not sure if they really carried it on, but I felt very proud with the changes that we were able to instill as a team because we just came together, we set our expectations, and flights ran themselves. Like, there was there was one super high-speed flight when I was the cadet commander, and they basically just ran themselves. They had little, like, Home Depot buckets, like the big orange buckets, and they would do their own cadence, and they would just march everywhere where, like, the not the guide on bearer, but one of the other cadets would tap on it, and they would just march themselves there. The flight commanders didn't, they would just say, here's where we're going, and the cadets would leave them, lead themselves. It was amazing. They were empowered. They felt like they were doing something as a team, and they came together in perfect unison to effectively carry out what they needed to get done, and went way beyond that. Their barracks were spotless. They were fantastic, and I would say a the overall quality of the encampment of how well the students followed expectations was extremely high in comparison to other years that I had seen. Now, when I was a squadron commander, that's a little different. It was it was more towards, I don't know how to say this. Um, the other squadrons, I'm not quite sure what they were like, but they were definitely different just based off of the command philosophy of the different squadron commanders. So I know with my squadron, I held them to a very high standard and they were almost at that point of those cadets it, when I was the cadet commander. So anyway, those are just my thoughts. I am interested to hear what your thoughts are. So if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, ideas, trivia, fun facts about encampment, I would love to hear them in the comments down below. I might do one more part to this series because I would like to talk a little bit more about intensity training and RST and the approach that I took with that. So that might be helpful for people. And that is why I will continue it in a future video. So thank you so much for watching. And that is all folks. Until next time. Doodles.